When I was young, my brother and I built a boat with our father. We spent several years sailing and exploring the Patuxent River. And then I met Tony. Peter and I spent many happy times on that boat. And so when we got married, we built a larger boat and ventured out into the Chesapeake Bay and its many rivers. We crewed on larger boats with dreams of sailing the world, but then life took another turn. Today, we look forward to retirement with dreams of leaving it all behind. Come join us on our journey to sail the Welcome. Seas. Uh, this is, I believe, episode 11, and we're going to discuss more sea wind options. <laughs> Man, there's a lot of options with this boat. Some of them, I think, should just be standard. But I, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I see... Easily spending 150000 on top of the base price for options if you're going to sail this, you know, even coastal anyways. But on the other hand, if you're just going to do day sail or take people out for the day, maybe you don't need all these options. So one That's way, it's, it's good. You can control the price of the boat. The other way, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll let you know when we're on our boat <laughs> in a, a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Today, I think we're going to discuss the navig start with the navigation options, see if we can roll through it, and see if we can finish discussing these options up in, in this episode. Um, we're going with the BG navigation options, um, the one with the seven inch chart plotter. Um, of course, we will upgrade that chart plotter uh, to 12, at least 12 inch. You know, men like big screens, so we're always going to have the big screens. If I can get a 16 inch, I don't know. It might block too much of the view at a 16 inch. Um, plus old man eyes, so bigger is better. But anyway, the, the navigation package comes with the chart plotter, the multi-function display, so those four. Uh, the auto helm, of course, you need the auto helm. We want the auto helm. The wind speed indicator, and I think the, the depth sounders, the transducers on, on the boat. I think the depth is really important. Yeah, well, it all comes in that package. Bang, we'll have all that in, in the package. Um, in addition, there's that little key fob of the BG Alta Helm remote. Uh, it allows you, it connects by Bluetooth and allows you to uh, tweak your settings um, from anywhere on the boat. Um, so that's kind of cool. You know, you'd be in a navigation desk on the inside in bad weather and you need to tweak your sails. You'll just do it from, from, the, um, from your key fob. You can keep it around your neck. I don't know if it's waterproof. I don't know if, if you fall overboard where you can make the boat come back or not. I guess just don't fall overboard. <laughs> but, you know, if you were up in a trampoline, you know, the Monica Lounge and all that, you can kind of tweak your sails. So, yeah, that, you know, that's, that's a must. Additional multifunction displays. You know, I think, you know, that there's certain information I want to see at a glance. You know, the wind angle, the sail directions, and then the other ones you can kind of swap around. So I think we would get at least one multifunction display uh, for the port helm. For the starboard helm, I we all we got there is a compass at the moment, right? That's it, but I'm not opposed to having more. Hey, maybe one, maybe two on the starboard side. What we'll probably do is have a, a, an old iPad or something like that, because with an iPad, you can mirror the uh, chart plotter, and you can just set the iPad up on the, on the starboard side uh, for your chart plotter. Um, I think the iPad, you can even control the, the screen and everything. You can't do it with a phone. But having those those MFDs on the starboard side, I think we're we're thinking about. I think they're seven hundred fifty dollars a pop. The HF or the sideband radio, that's an expensive option. That's over eight thousand dollars, I believe. I just don't know if we'll ever have a need to use it. I know if you sail with the Atlantic Rally, the Arc, you know, crossing the oceans, I, I think they used to require the sideband radio. I, I I don't think we're gonna get it. You know, I, I no, it, not for that money. If we ever need it, we're gonna have to have it installed retro. The radar, yes. Yes. Yeah, I think we're gonna get the radar. We're gonna have to go and take a class on radar. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a safety uh, options. You know, if you're sailing along the coast and all that, it's nice having the radar to spot the. The, the ships and the other boats, especially at night. And if you're in a remote areas, it's nice having a radar. So I, I think we're, we're getting a radar. 
the satellite phone iridium system right now i i think we're going to go with that you know that's that's the satellite we get our weather reports send text messages the bge b and g bhf radio uh we're gonna say no we're gonna go with the cortex uh, bhf radio option I, I think it's just a cool system. I think it can do a whole lot more than just a simple VHF radio. It still does the AIS and everything else, but you know they're constantly upgrading it. You can upgrade the firmware and all that. And I, I think just that's the way to go. I, we're unsure about the B and G forward scan sonar. I, I kind of like the idea after sailing the Bahamas with all those coral reefs that kind of just pop up everywhere and you really had to string your way into some of those anchorages. I can see where the, where the sonar will come in. See, in the scanning. trimaran, we had, we could beach it. it we had no depth, so we no really depth. never paid too much So it depth, wasn't an issue, but, yeah. but it was And it was, was light enough that we could push it up, push it up. Also, gunk holing, you know, we do have a drop. I know three feet, eight inches. Doesn't seem like a lot, but for us trimaran sailors, wow, that's that's pretty deep. Uh, we have to worry about depth depth now. Um, so maybe we, we, we might get also for gunk holing around the areas of the bay and, and along the coast and all, it might be pretty nice to have. Those that have this, you know, some people say, I got them. I never had a reason to use them. Well, mm. You know, that's a lot of money and never need to use it. So send us comments, you know, on any of these. Tell us what you think. Tell us if it's a waste of money or, you know, it's nice or when you need it, it's and, nice to have it. And tell us why. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, because, I mean, it's, we're to the point now where if we want this, we might have to take that away, you know, because we can go on with options. The wireless modem kit. I, I think we would need that, you know, that's where you put the SIM card in. Like if we were in the Bahamas, we would buy a SIM card and that will be our internet connections through, through the islands in the places that have some type of cellular type of, of signal. There was a lot of places we didn't have any. Um, um, uh, the plumbing options is the next set of options I think we want to discuss. And there's some plumbing options. Uh, the deck wash fresh water. This is where you and me dis disagree. He doesn't uh, think we need fresh water. I, I, uh, fresh water is just so precious to be wasted uh, washing your deck. I agree with you on that. I'm looking at it for squirting the anchor road off of the forward section. We're going to get the deck wash salt water with the galley spigot combo set. This gives us... The, the spigot and the pumps, but also in the galley, in the sink, one of ours is going to be raw water coming in from from the ocean or wherever we're at. And that's nice because you can do that preliminary scrub on your dishes without wasting the precious. A lot of water. That's, yes. that's probably a good thing. Um, and, and then rinse in fresh water. Right. Instead of taking your dishes to the sugar scoop, dipping them in the water and then cleaning, we'll just do tab that. So that will save water. Um... And while we're in the galley, the, the charcoal filtered spigot uh, to filter the water, yes. I, I think, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. The salt water wash down in the cockpit, yes. I think that's good. Um, for rinsing fish guts off and stuff like that. If there's a fresh water, I guess we'll have to have, to have that discussion again. Um, the galley sink, I think we will have fresh water. In the, in the cockpit sink? No, your cockpit sink. Yeah. Cockpit sink, yeah. I think that's a good idea because, you know, that you can use that sink for a lot of different things and you might want fresh water. Yeah, I might want to do some dishes there or cleaning or something there. Uh, the transom shower, um, when we were in, um, in the Bahamas, I used to transom shower all the time when we chartered to see when... 1260, I used to transom shower. It's a must. And hot and cold running water in the transom shower. You get out from swimming or snorkeling, uh, you take a shower, you rinse yourself off, whatever. Uh, it's it's a must. So we're, we're definitely I was hesitant that. about that, but 
That was one of a pleasant surprise in the Bahamas. It was nice and warm down there, and you have a lot of room. You can just get it going with, with the transom. Show. Yeah, we yeah. would go for a swim, and then come back, and then you know you could do a quick shower right there, and just you felt so refreshed. The electric toilet on the manual pump. We have experience with both. Yes. I've had religious experience Not with both, board. <laughs> and I can tell you, once you've gone electric. You're not going back to pump. It is nice to have the electric. Um, but does the electric also have a hand pump if you had to use it? No, that's the downsize. Really? Yes. I think they should have both. <laughs> it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. um, the electric one's like a big old garbage disposal. It just brings everything down and grinds it. It's brilliant. The, the hand pump uh, worked well. Yeah, it was a workout. <laughs> it was a workout. <laughs> I'm well, sure you'd get used to it. Depending on your business and all, but, but yeah, I mean. It worked fine. Yeah, it worked fine, but the electric's nice. The gray water system around this area, the gray water system is where your dish, your, your, your dish and your shower, shower stuff goes in there. And then, you know, there's no need for it around this area. I know there's parts of the world. Uh, that might require it, but not for us. So I think we're and skipping on the And the boats we've been water. on, neither boat had that, right? I haven't been on a boat with a gray water system. Really? Yeah, so I know some park areas require it, but not around here. So we'll see. No, no on the gray water system. Or water maker. We're, we're, we're getting a water maker. You know, I for, think that's important. Yeah. Um, I think the sea went uh, uh, offers suspect, suspect, Spectra Ventura, it offers a, a, a water maker. It's not a, a robust water maker. It's like you're not making 20 gallons an hour. I think it's rated at six gallons an hour. Well, and it's expensive. You know, I think it's a $12,000 option. So it's, it's quite an expensive option. But when you're sailing, you know, we'll probably never use it in the bay. You don't need to pickle with with the with the spectra, meaning that it's there for uh, you can on demand. I think some of these uh, water makers, yeah, if you're not going to use them, you have to keep them in a pickle solution to oh, keep the bacteria and stuff off, and then you have to go through the deep pickling and all that. So I believe the spectra is you flip a switch. So what's the, the average five gallons per person per day, which includes drinking, flushing. And stuff so you figure two three out running it two three hours for you and me should keep us in, in the water uh, rather nicely the entertainment options we we like our music right we do enjoy music we, we don't rock and roll or, or headbang or anything like that no. but nice jazz at, at dinner and the piano guys you know the mood music while you just kick back and relax so yes we're going to get the the the, the, the fusion and the Four speakers. I, I don't really care about the subwoofers or the extra set I don't of think speakers, we need those. right? Because we're not headbanging to anything. Um, we're gonna get the uh, the TV. I think. I think the TV is important for us. Not that we're gonna watch TV all the time, but you might want to watch a movie or something. Uh, stream, stream and, a movie. Or, and if or, we have the grandchildren, we may need to. Keep them occupied. So. Yeah, we could also project our course or on voyages right. or passages, you know, project that on the TV. I just, um, I like the idea of having it. And because there's a 22 option and a 32 op, two inch options, which option are we going to get? I like the 32. Yes. Always go bigger. If you can go bigger. But 32 bigger. is not that big. No, but, but it, it fills that space up. It fills quite, the quite space. Nice. Yeah. 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 Safety options. Our first safety options is fire extinguishers. Um, the C1 includes options for the fire extinguisher closet. Not mm -hmm. necessarily the fire extinguishers. does include the fire extinguishers. Not a big problem. We'll just get fire extinguishers here. But the closets. And there's four closets. Or you can get up to four closets. We will get the four closets. Doesn't mean we're going to have just four fire extinguishers. We're probably going to have fire extinguishers as strategic spaces on the boat, you know, in various compartments, we'll store them and stuff like that. You can never have too many fire extinguishers. So we'll have the fire extinguishers. Um, the Blue Water Davit upgrade, nope. We, we have Davits when we extended the solar panels. 
Um, that's our Davit system. Uh, we will have the outboard motor bracket and the outboard motor Davit. So for passage making, we can uh, lift that motor off, swing it over to the bracket and secure it on the bracket. Because so it's not it can bouncing come with loose the, with yes. the movement. We've seen them come We've loose. We've had that happen. Drogue attachment points. Yes, when we sail around the horn, we're going to want. We're not sailing around. The horn. <laughs> when the seas are rough, um, you know, and and you start sliding, surfing down the waves, you can surf down. The bows can dig in. You can pitch bowl over. You you don't want to be out there saying, "Wow, it's really rough. I have a drogue. I have no place to tie it." Get the attachment point. In the scheme of things, it's not very expensive. The, you know, it needs to be built into boat. So. Yes, we will we'll get the drug attachment system. The dinghy. We're not going to get the dinghy from Seawind. There's a, a uh, you know, living on the Chesapeake Play, there's a, no shortage of places to buy marine stuff, right? True. So we'll get our dinghy. And the dinghy, the dinghy I want and the dinghy we're going to get are two different dinghies. I, I like the high field, uh, 340. Uh, I like the center, co the center console in there, the FCT. Uh, but unfortunately, the w uh, the additional weight is just too much. I think right. to drag in, to drag on the back of a 1260, it's just too much weight. The you, know, you have the big wide sterns. It's just going to affect the performance too much. Otherwise, I would get it. So we're going to go with a high field classic 340. Um, Which we'll was the same one we had on the boat in the Bahamas, right? Yes, same same one. More than adequate for us. We'll have a 20 horsepower motor on it. Um, and we'll have a battery. Electric start. We're too old to be yanking on, on ropes. Um, yeah. They Usually they have no problem starting until you're going out to dinner. It's 90 degrees out. Then they'll never start. And we'll have running lights on our dinghy. Yes, that's important. Uh, in the United States, you can't be out of dusk even on a dinghy uh, without running lights. So we'll, we'll get that here uh, in, in the United States. Sail hardware. This is the jewelry of the boat. This is boat jewelry. You have your rings and watches. I have you winches so and excited. tackle. <laughs> um, this is where most of the money goes. And it um, is important. So right off top, we're, we're getting the bow sprit option because we want a screecher. The screecher will be on a continuous furling system on the bow sprit. Um, so that's nice. The Chesapeake Bay area and the light and variable winds, you really need a, a bigger sail than that self-tacking jib. So we're going to get the bow sprit with, with, with a screecher. Um, and because we're getting a bow sprit, that concludes a lot of the hardware, so the general uh, track uh, Deck fittings is not necessary. Okay. So we got that. Um, the jib clue system, you know, the, the jib runs, self tacking jib runs on the track. Um, when we sailed 1160 for the day, we were constantly running up on the deck to adjust the, the jib clue track. That's kind of, was kind of a pain in the ass, um, which we didn't realize. And then we sailed the 1260, which had the jib clue system running to the cockpit. And we were able to do everything from the cockpit, adjusting that jib clue track uh, without running up on the fore deck. And, and that's what is, we want. This is why we like the 1260, because everything comes back to the cockpit, right. which is important for him. And I, it's, it's an option. You probably could have gotten it on 1160 as well. But, but you know, after. Oh, I didn't mean, I meant the sea wind. Yeah. You know, that's after probably. Doing both, the, the, having it come back to the cockpit is the way to go. Yeah. Because you, know, you don't want to be running up and down, especially at our age, rough seas and stuff. Anything that we can do from the cockpit. From the safety I mean, of the cockpit. Things can go wrong right? still, and that means means you'd have to leave the cockpit but for the most part that's our safety capsule is the cockpit so if we don't have to go out um the 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 third reefing point we're, we're going to get that again for for the same reason without it you're going to have to switch your reef points and if you're looking at doing the third reef the last thing you want to do is start running up on the on the roof switching out your reef, reef points so we're getting the, the, the third reef point. That's important. Uh, again, so we can reef from, from the cockpit right. without go, having to go out there and, and switch things out. So that, that's important. 
Uh, steps going up the mast, those are the folding steps. I'm, we're not getting it with the exception of four feet from the top of the mast. I'll probably get the steps. So if I have to go up there, I can kind of brace myself on those steps. I've been up top of the mast before. It does a little ripple on the bottom really is- Sways on top. Sway, sway up on top. So having those those steps will give you a kind of an anchor point if you have to a go up there and work stability. on it. Yeah. yeah. And same with halfway down to the spreaders, you know, because that's probably the next point. If I have to work on something, the radar and some other stuff along the spreader, I want those steps there. Otherwise, the, the steps really doesn't buy you much. Multi-purpose spinnaker deck hardware. We will have a spinnaker. Uh, so therefore, we will need the deck hardware to run, run the spinnaker system. Uh, synthetic lifelines versus stainless steel. Well, we're not going to get the synthetic. We're just going to go. I don't know what the advantage of the synthetic it, is. It's a slight weight savings. You know, if we were, wow. you know, and we should be concerned about weight. Uh, all these options are just adding weight. Uh, the electric winch. We yes. need that. <laughs> Um, I've dogged or, or, or uh, I did okay. Yeah, um, <laughs> jumped the domain, you know, and it's not bad, but why? Um, do it from the safety of the cockpit. So electric winch pays for itself, so much so that we might get the electric winch on the starboard side as well um, for furling and unfurling uh, the the forward sails. I think we're on the home stretch here. Okay. Sales. We're, we're into sales. Um, I go back and forth on just a regular Dacron and a regular uh, cruising laminates, upgrades. Today, if you ask me, I would say laminates all the way. Tomorrow, I might flip again. I just, you know, there's a little bit more expensive. I just don't really know so so the advantage of the dacron is they don't rip but they might they're tougher to rip they tend to, to stretch rip. where the laminates hold their shape better but they might but when they fail easier. usually it's spectacular so we would like some opinions on yeah that, right? give comments should we should we do the cruising laminates um we do like the performance that's where we're getting to see when the laminates will probably be better for performance but we go back and forth on this. This is not cast in, in stone. And we had Dacron sails on our trimaran. We've always had Dacrons in the past, yes. So this, this is something that's new for us. So please send us comments. Tell us your opinions. The other thing is that we're unsure of is we know we're going to get a spinnaker. Are we going to get a spinnaker out of the box? I don't know. Uh, we probably won't use a spinnaker the first season just, you know, uh, breaking the boat in around the Chesapeake Bay. Um, by the time you get the spinnaker set up, you're, you're, you're attacking. The winds have to be just right. But when we go coastal, we will have a spinnaker. So whether we get it from Sea Wind or have it built locally, we don't know yet. But it will be. A, we will have a multi-purpose asymmetrical spinnaker. It will be on a sock system. That's what we had on a trimaran. Yeah, and we had that really pretty spinnaker. Yes, and we have to come up with a cool spinnaker design. Once we figure out a boat name, then, then we'll, come, we'll, we'll come up with a standard design. So that concludes, I think, you know, there's some fabric selections and, and, and colors and stuff like that that we're not going to discuss because we're, Things I don't care. Things could all change by the right. few years and, from now, and, their fabrics You know, who change, cares so. about your sail bags if it's, you I know, tucked, tucked, tucked in, in your storage area. Oh, the not stack the sail bag. The stack I, pack I, on the, the boom. Sling yeah. On the, yeah, that, yeah, that I like that to see I definitely one care myself, about. But, but the see. bags that are in the, I don't care about those. So now we're, you know, there's some things we want to change, like options to the options or change the options, you know. And the first one is in the galley refrigerator. They're staying up, open up. There's a little freezer compartment in there. And that's just going to frost up. And you end up spending a lot of time defrosting it. So I'm going to see if I can get a refrigerator without that little freezer compartment. Because that's, that's just trouble. You know, we've and there seen is them a on large, campers and right. stuff. And, and there's a large, I say large, but, you know, a large freezer 
There's it's like a, a little chest product. like freezer in the in the and if we want we don't drink, use ice at all. We home. don't use it a lot, but if you wanted it, you could just use little ice trays or little silicone. Or, or whiskey ones. stones. Or whiskey just stones. Throw whiskey stones in the freezer. What's nice it's about them is you can reuse them. So yeah, that's one thing I I don't want. Um other thing that we might want is uh railings to help pull yourself up on the bunks. <coughs> yeah, I would have needed that. That that I noticed right away when you're trying, at least on the aft side of the owner's um, cabin, to try to get up in the bed. There's there's steps, um, but there's nothing to hold Something on to. Something just to grab onto. Just We're to grab see onto. If we can get to. Yeah, just I, a, a again, handle. this is an older person thing. You right. Know? Probably. When we were young, we had just jumped up there. Yeah, you know, would have been fine. Be a big deal. Um, the galley spigot. It's just a, 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 a faucet. Um, I, I like to get that changed out for something like I can pull in and kind of like make it rain. You know. Yeah, like a, one on a hose. Yeah, that you can slide down and slide, slide up. up. So that's one, one change. So you can like easier rinsing. Yes. It's it's fairly large sink, but it's still a boat, you know. <laughs> it, it, you know, having that flexibility to wash dishes is, is yes. a lot. And, and we've been on boats that had it, and well, you know, once 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 you use it, you can't live without it. Yes. So we're going to ask for that. And I think the other other customization that we know of today is, I like some racks in the cabin, not the cabin, the cockpit roof, for putting up boat hooks, uh, fishing rods, gaffs, that type of stuff. So when we're out there, uh, you know, we have a little place to store mm -hmm. them. But outside of that, I, I think this is our, the boat. These are the options that we're looking at today. And I think we're concluding this series, right? I think so. Three three episodes just on I see when options. Um, and in the end, there are I don't a lot know of options you have yet. to think about. And we have gone back and forth, and we probably still will. Comment. Comment on options that you think we should get or should not be getting. It's, it's a waste of money because there's some we are going back on for it. So this concludes the series. Two years from now or another year when we have to finalize everything uh, again, uh, we might change your mind, our, our mind, and we'll, we'll keep everybody up to date. <laughs> we done? <laughs> I think so. Okay, so if you like these episodes, you know, Thumbs up it, uh, subscribe, comment. We like we like to comments. We're getting some great comments, so and we are listening them. So we're done here, right? I'm Peter. I'm Tony. And we're done with options. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.